Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a very, very short review of Batman and Joker, the deadly duo number one from Mark Silvestri, writing and illustrating. I don't want to give away too much of the plot and everything going on in this because I absolutely do think you should all be reading this comic book. If you haven't got a copy, definitely go out to your comic book shop after you watch this. Go support your local comic shop and treat yourself to an absolutely fantastic comic book. Now, this isn't perfect by any means. I will give it like a four or a four and a half out of five. I highly recommend in my book. I think Mark Silvestri really does a great job here. Obviously, the art from Mark Silvestri is the big selling point on this book, but I don't think that's really the best part of this book. Shockingly, I knew the art was going to be good, but there's some really strong elements in this comic book. If I have a gripe, what's keeping this from being like a five-star comic book, it reads at a blistering pace. And while I'm sure it's like 24, maybe 28 pages or something like that, it reads like it's about 12 because it's really engaging. It's really intense. And when it was over and I got to the to be continued part, I was certainly disappointed because I thought we should have probably gotten a little bit more story in here. This particular issue is a lot of setup regarding what's going on, introducing a couple of key elements, maybe a key player here and there, obviously getting Batman and Joker together, establishing why these two are going to work together to fight this new threat in Gotham. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And while I can readily acknowledge DC Comics produce Far, far too many Batman comic books these days. If you're going to do something special, bring in somebody like a Mark Silvestri, bring in a Todd McFarlane and a Greg Capullo, and really knock it out of the park. Batman is your premier character. He's the flagship. He's selling more comic books probably than every other character put together. Treat the character with respect, bring in the best creators possible, and really light the comic book industry on fire with the best stories possible. And I really think this is what they should be concentrating on rather than blase stuff trying to get other characters over because this is absolutely great. Let's look at the art first. And I think it's also a good representation of a couple of other things that are really working very strongly in this comic book. It is very dark. It's very grim. As you would expect from Mark Silvestri, it's hard hitting. And I must say, it's too bad Mark Silvestri never got like a two or three year run on Batman or Detective Comics because based on what I'm seeing here, his work with the character, his understanding of shadow, his understanding of gore, what to show, what not to show, presenting Batman doing detective work. I think he would have gone down as one of the best Batman artists of all times. I'm not even joking. That's how good the art is in this comic book. A lot of people would already say he's the best X-Men artist of all times, and I think that's up for debate, but he's certainly in the conversation because the art is really, really good. One character that he really does right by here is Harvey Bullock. We do see the character in Batman and Detective from time to time, and maybe a miniseries here and there. And when Batman talks about Bullock in this comic book, like he has a lot of respect for the character, and it made me feel like Mark Silvestri had done his homework, has definitely read a lot of Batman comic books, and that comes through loud and clear, especially his voice for Batman and some of the other characters. And obviously, opening up with some detective work, which we don't see much of in Batman comics these days, he is the world's greatest detective for a reason. To see him going through, pulling bullet fragments out of walls, doing detective work, really felt like a breath of fresh air. In a lot of modern Batman comics, he would pull out a MacGuffin, hit a button, and it would analyze it for him and tell him all the data that he needed to have. I like that he was a little bit more hands-on here. Mark Silvestri's voice for all the characters in here. And there are cameos from Catwoman, Harley Quinn, who does appear to play a larger part in the story as it moves forward. Like, his voice for the characters is spot on. This is the best dialogue I've heard from a Harley Quinn appearance in a comic book in like years now. It's really spot on. There's this mysterious character and apparently he's captured her. He's waiting on the Joker to come get her. There's a little conversation going back and forth. Her interaction is really, really good. Her captor is asking if she thinks Joker's come to get her. And she says, oh, you betcha. My pudding's going to come busted in here like a pasty faced Rambo and fill your stupid noggin with lead. Then he'll sweep me up in his arms and we'll make out like crazy for hours and hours. And when we're done, we're going to chop you into kibble and feed your loser ass to my little pals, talking about the rats that she's kind of play with there. That felt like Harley Quinn. Yes, you do get the weird little Harley Quinn isms in there, the weird turn of phrase here, there, maybe a little bit of a joke, but it's also very menacing. She feels pretty dangerous, even though she's being held captive here. And in my opinion, the standout feature of this comic book, even better than the artwork, which is phenomenal, really is the dialogue of the characters. It all felt natural to who they are as characters within Batman. And a lot of new writers could learn a thing or two from Mark Silvestri and the way that he frames these characters and their personalities. They all feel distinctive and they all feel true to life. A lot of times my favorite presentation of Batman 
is when he doesn't really say anything, he maybe says 10 to 30 words in the comic book, but we get tons of internal monologue of Batman as he's breaking down the situation and reacting to things and he's noticing stimuli here and there, and he's always calculating and analyzing and reacting and staying one step ahead of everything. That's a classic take on Batman. We definitely get that here from Mark Silvestri. Also, what really shines through, although it's not really focused on too much within this story, is the relationship between Batman and Gotham. Gotham City, in my opinion, is the second most interesting character in Batman comics, and I think the relationship between Gotham and Batman is perhaps the most intriguing relationship in all of comic books. Here we see Bruce's inner monologue. Gotham PD would be happier if it was me lying there on the ground because somebody has just died. I work outside the system. No official clearance. No oversight to monitor my actions. I don't follow any form of due process. Clean cops fear me because I don't follow rules they swore an oath to. Dirty cops fear me because they know one day I'll come for them. Really breaks down the relationship between Batman and GCPD really well. They're kind of always at odds, but some people want to work with him. Obviously, you have Gordon and Bullock in this story that are his friends and allies, but he's always on the outside because he doesn't play by their rules. And there's tons of internal dialogue that I think really felt like Batman. I really appreciated that. A package shows up after Batman has begun investigating a couple of murders that have happened. Really weird stuff. He knows something's afoot. All of a sudden, this package shows up. He investigates it. There's organic material, and it's claimed to be a body part of Jim Gordon, who Batman believes is on a fishing trip. And that's when we finally meet the Joker. Probably not good timing on his part to arrive at the exact same time as this body part from Jim Gordon. Obviously, Batman thinks he's involved. He strings him up, and we get some really good interaction between the two before, yes, they do end up teaming up, but I'm not going to show you that because you need to read the comic book. He swings him off the side of the building through a window. Joker says, I'm not paying for that. Where's Gordon? You're kidding, right? Tell me where Gordon is or I drop you. Come on, Bats. We've been doing this for like, what, forever? You're not going to drop me, so lay off the improv and let's stick to the script, especially since it won't be long before Gordon starts losing parts he probably wants to keep. Now pull me up and let's talk turkey. I'm in a jam, buddy, and I need your help. I personally really enjoy this comic book. I think a lot of Batman fans are going to like this, but I think just comic book fans in general, if you like dirty, gritty comic books, you are going to like Batman and Joker, the Deadly Duo, a lot. We've been waiting on this comic book for years now. They announced it like two or three times. It never arrived. It's finally here. Mark Silvestri writing and illustrating Batman. It reads at a blistering pace. The artwork is phenomenal, but it's the voices of the characters that really put this comic book over the top. If you have not gotten your copy of Batman and Joker, the Deadly Duo, number one, you are missing out. You need to go to your comic shop and get you a copy. When you're there... Batman 129 from Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez is also on the shelf. If you're not sold on that comic book, a few weeks ago I talked about the very best comic books that you can buy focusing in on Batman 128. If you are not sold on this, definitely check this video out. It's nice. It's brief. I don't spoil everything, but you get a good flavor of what the comic book is, what it's about, and you might want to pick up Batman 129 as well. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.